If you're a first time home buyer in Toronto, choosing the right neighborhood can make or break your investment. As you're not just buying a house or a condo, you're kind of setting up foundation for a future. As someone who helps a lot of first time home buyers in the city, one of the most common questions we get is what areas or neighborhood would make sense for them. So in this video, I'm going to explore some of the best neighborhoods in the city, highlighting best condo buildings in those specific areas that gives a mix of affordability, good potential growth and overall good living experience. So if you get any value out of this content, then please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel to grow. And if you've got any questions about real estate, you can book a call with me by clicking on the first link mentioned in the description below. Now let's get right into it. So the first neighborhood we're gonna talk about is Old Town Toronto, which is right over here. Let me just quickly zoom in. It's basically east of Church Street to west of Parliament to south of Queen Street to north of Front Street. So this specific pocket is pretty unique vibe to it. It's got a pretty unique vibe to it. It's got great coffee shops, good restaurants, bars. And overall, in my opinion, this neighborhood is safe. Uh, in terms of accessibility, it, this really district is about like 10 to 12 minutes walk from this uh, neighborhood. Uh, you can also walk to Lake Ontario on south, which is again going to be about like 10 to 12 minutes walk. And if you're someone who works in financial district, the walk from this neighborhood to financial district is going to be about like 10 to 15 minutes of a walk and if you're someone who doesn't like to walk you can hop onto a streetcar and the commute of the same is going to be about like 10 minutes give and take on a streetcar in terms of future growth potential in this corner of this neighborhood that is uh, berkeley street and front street that intersection uh, they are setting up a ontario line subway station so that's something good that, but that's way down the line but that's something i wanted to highlight there's going to be subway station coming up so which is good and in terms of accessibility to highways that is dvp and Gardner, that is also good it's not too far from this specific pocket now let's go ahead and check out good condo buildings in this specific pocket so the first good building we're going to talk about is at 158 front street east also called st lawrence condominiums this is a 26 story building developed by citizen group which is a pretty solid developer in the city this building is fairly new it's just two years old and the maintenance fee we're looking at is 80 cents per square foot and the condos in this building sell for about like thousand to eleven hundred dollars per square foot and the exact location of this condo building is at front and frederick this is the intersection so the condo is located right over here so the next good building in this specific pocket is we're going to talk about is 109 front street east also called new Times square this building is not a high rise it's just 12 stories building which is a good thing just mid-rise uh, developer is cambrost felcorp and this building is slightly old it's 25 years old but it is managed well that is why the maintenance fee we're looking at is 83 cents per square foot and the condos in this building sell for about like 900 to thousand dollars per square foot one of the reasons this building is good is because the the units in this building have a pretty solid and functional layout so the that is something good uh, we don't which we don't find in newer condo buildings these days and this building is located on the southeast corner of the intersection of front street and lower jarvis street which is right over here just beside st lawrence market and the third good building in this vicinity we're going to talk about is 112 and 116 george street also called Wu condos 24 story building developed by aspen ridge homes uh 14 years old so basically it's not too it's not a brand new building or not too old managed well again 64 cents per square foot that's the maintenance fee we're looking at and the condos in this building sell for about like 970 dollars per square foot and this building is located right at adelaide and george street that's the intersection and this is where the building is located and the fourth good building we're going to talk about is one market street this is actually one of my favorite buildings in the city this is located just south of the old town it's located on market and the esplanade that's the exact intersection let me show you on the map so this is where exactly it is located just on the south of the st lawrence market and uh, this building is 34 stories developed by context development 11 years old not too old not brand new which is a good, a good sweet spot and the maintenance fee you're looking at is 72 cents per square foot and the condos in this building sell for about like thousand to eleven hundred dollars per square foot pretty solid and functional layout in the building it's a very well managed building in my opinion and the views looking out south east and especially west are pretty good you can see on the screen this is the view looking out west which is pretty pretty cool view of the city so now let's go ahead and check out the next good neighborhood so the next good neighborhood I'm going to talk about is at Distillery District. It's again located on the east end of the city. So let me quickly zoom in over here. So this is the area of Distillery District. It's got cobblestone streets. It's very historical buildings. You can find people sitting outside on the patios and, and cafes. So it's got a very vibrant feel to it. 
And in my opinion, the city has done a pretty good job in preserving these heritage or historical buildings because you can find buildings with uh, red brick stone facades and iron detailing, so which is pretty cool. So from this neighborhood, you do have an easy access to a park. So you can go to Cocktown Common, which is on east side of this neighborhood, it's about like five minutes walk from the specific pocket. You do also have a good access to highways, that is DVP and Gardner. Uh, in terms of transit accessibility, there's a streetcar loop just beside the east side of this uh, neighborhood that is on Cherry Street. You can find a streetcar loop, which, which you can use to go to the core of the city. It's gonna take you about like 15 to 20 minutes of commute on a streetcar. Uh, for subway accessibility, I'm going to say the same thing for this neighborhood as well. Right now, they don't have direct access as of today, but down the line, there is they are setting up an Ontario Line subway station, which is just north side of this neighborhood at Cocktown Station. So that'll be good down the line. And now let's go ahead and check out a few good buildings in this neighborhood. The other two good buildings in Distillery District we're gonna talk about is 70 Distillery Lane and 390 Cherry Street. These both are sister buildings. Uh, these are high rights. It's a 43-story building developed by Cityscape Development. This building is 11 years old and the maintenance fee we're looking at is 85 cents per square foot. And the condos in this building sell for about like 1,000 to $1,100 per square foot. I have a few clients living in these buildings and they have nothing bad to say. They all are happy in this building. So that's a good feedback so far I received. Now let's go ahead and check out the good neighborhood for first time home buyers in the city. All right, so now we're going to go towards the west end of the city and we're going to talk about Fort York Boulevard area. In my opinion, it's a pretty good neighborhood. So we're going to talk about the area which is just west of Bathurst. This little pocket has got many good buildings and it's got a pretty good little pocket. It's not as busy as the core of the city, but at the same time, you are in the central part of the city. The Lake Ontario is just like five minutes walk from this building or from this uh, neighborhood. That's what I meant. And you can see the Coronation Park is also like five minutes walk from this neighborhood and you've got they've got lots going on they've got opened up Loblaws I mean it's been a while the Loblaws has been open there Loblaws shoppers got great restaurants farm boy also opened up from close by from this neighborhood and you can see the King West which where you can find a bunch of great restaurant bars and all those clubs and nice coffee shops it's not too far from here this area is basically King West on the northeast corner of this neighborhood so which is pretty sweet pretty central at the same time it is not super busy in my opinion and uh, you can see you can find for young working professionals in this neighborhood and as well as young families in this neighborhood now let's go ahead and i'm going to highlight a couple of good buildings in this neighborhood so let's check those out so the good buildings in fort york boulevard are 219 and 231 fort york boulevard these buildings are 38 and 28 stories respectively developed by lentera developments pretty solid developers in the city uh, the age of these buildings are approximately 18 years and the maintenance fee we're looking at is 75 cents per square foot which is not too bad in my opinion and the condos in this building sell for about like thousand dollars per square foot so as a first time home buyer i would definitely recommend these buildings now let's go ahead and check out another good building in this vicinity so we're looking at 38 grand magazine street again good building this is not a high rise it's a 17 story building developed by a developer called plaza they are pretty good developers in the city the age of this building is nine years and the maintenance fee we're looking at is 75 cents per square foot and the condos in this building sell at a pretty good price point that is 866 to 900 dollars per square foot so as again as a first time home buyer, this is a pretty solid building uh, with which i would consider so now let's go ahead and check out the last good neighborhood for a first time home buyer in the city of toronto so the fourth good neighborhood for a first time home buyer i'm going to talk about is liberty village let me quickly zoom in over here so it is between Dufferin to the west, to the Strons on the east, to the King Street on to the north, and to the Gardner to the towards the south. So that's the uh, area of this uh, neighborhood or Liberty Village. Different people have different opinions for this neighborhood, but in my opinion, I think it is a pretty good neighborhood. Uh, especially if, if you're young and a first time home buyer, you are someone who are in 20s or 30s, uh, it is a pretty good spot for you because the demographic of this neighborhood is pretty young and you've got trendy restaurants, bars, pretty cool cafes and it's called industrial lofts which i'm going to talk about uh, pretty soon and not only residences it also has a uh, pretty cool tech startup or tech startup offices so it's called overall got a pretty good community vibe to it which i really appreciate about this uh, neighborhood and i'll be honest sometimes it gets busy or it gets loud as well sometimes but overall it's a pretty good neighborhood in my opinion so now let's go ahead and check out the good buildings in liberty village so one of the good buildings in liberty village we're going to talk about is at 43 Hannah Avenue also called Toy Factory. This is used to be a toy factory in the 1900s and now it was converted into lots by 
by Lentera Group in 2008. And this is one of my favorite buildings in the city. It's a pretty good building in my opinion. Uh, just not a high rise. Again, it's just eight story building developed by Lentera Group. This building was converted into lofts in 2008. So that's why it's 16 years old. And the patent fee is pretty low at 60 cents per square foot. And the condos in this building sell at an average price point of 1078 dollars per square foot this is just an average uh, i've seen condos selling at a way higher than price point than this depending upon the floor plan and the overall layout of the unit this in the building so now let's go ahead and check out the second good building liberty village which i would recommend this that is 100 western battery also called the vibe at the village it's 24 stories uh developed by monarch group which is part of a matipi group uh, the age of this building is 14 years and the maintenance fee we're looking at is slightly on the higher end it's 7.97 cents per square foot and the Honors in this building sell for about like thousand to eleven hundred dollars per square foot so that's pretty much for today i hope i was able to give you some value and i hope i was able to shed some light that what neighborhoods you should consider as a first time home buyer if you got any questions please feel free to reach out to me anytime by clicking on the first link mentioned in the description below thank you so much and see you in the next video